So this is it. Champions League, group stage draw, and Wolves are one of eight teams that have been seeded four for the draw. Well, I think we're going to get a very tough group indeed. I always did a group of death when we're in a European competition, and I would say it would indeed be Paris Saint-Germain, last year's winners, Barcelona, and I tell you what, Napoli as well. Or possibly Milan, or maybe Porto. I mean, to be honest, you know, if we get PSG and Barcelona, I think it's a group of death automatically. But here we go. Let's draw the first seeds first and see who falls where. Okay, so we can't get Group A or Group H. And as the second seeds now come out, I'm looking at Group B right now. Third seeds next. And that would be a tough one. I've got to say that at the moment... Well, hang on a second. B, C, D, E. I'm just lifting, listing the alphabet here. And, 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 and that's it, isn't it? That's the only groups we can get drawn in. So it is indeed Group B we could get. And it's not Group B. And it's not Group C. Which means it's Group D. And we've got Ajax, Borussia, Dortmund, Celtic and Wolves. And I'll be, well, we are Wolves. Well done, mate. And I'll be honest here. That could have gone a lot worse. Dortmund, of course, fantastic side. Ajax, as we know, recently reaching the Champions League semi-finals. And Celtic as well. Well, I tell you what. I think we've got a chance there. I really do. It, it certainly won't be easy. But it could have been a hell of a lot tougher, that's for sure. That, that's a group we could get out of. Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another episode of the FM Reboot. It's episode number 21 and today we're returning with the Foxes in the Premier League and our first ever Champions League game with Wolves away in Amsterdam against Ajax. There's also been a new signing on transfer deadline day as well. So before we show you how Wolves begin on the camera, Let's get to that first. It's not the most exciting of signings, but fitting considering his summer window. I didn't spend a penny on him. We just bought him in on loan. And real briefly as well, we did sell uh, one of our young strikers here. Leonardo Campagna went to Olympiacos for half a million. Totally fine with me. In the final year is still. Wasn't going to get a game here with the emerging Fabio Silva right behind Raul Jimenez and Caicedo coming in too. So yeah, for the signing, as you can see on deadline day, we bought in Brandon Williams on loan from Manchester United. A local lad in the Northwest, but now he's come to spend a year with us on loan. He was on at Southampton um, last year and did really, really well in guiding them back to the Premier League. So now he's going to get some game time here at Wolves uh, in the Premier League. And, you know, he's, he's got some very good stats. You know, a lot of personality. Perfection is my favourite in the game. 15 natural fitness, 16 for acceleration and pace. So pretty decent here. Uh, and again, mentally very good indeed. 17 determination, 14 teamwork, uh, 15 work rate as well. And technically too, not bad when going forward. And also pretty solid in the back with 13 marking and 14 tackling as well. Only 22 years old and um, yeah, in for a loan. And he'll provide cover for Wright Nuri and Nelson Semedo as well as you can play both left and right back. So that's it. That was how deadline day went. And I'll show you how we got off, I got off camera now on the back of the 1-0 loss to Arsenal uh, on the opening day. Uh, five games in a run off camera, four in the league and one in the Carab Cup. And as you can see, it's been a mixed start for Wolves. Three defeats and three victories in our opening six games. So we have one to win against Man. Manchester City, uh, great to get a scalp in this one here so early on into the season. Adama Traore went on one of those crazy solo runs. These type of goals are just so cool to watch, man. Picking the ball up from inside his own half, going the whole way and drilling it in for the only goal of the game and a 1-0 win. And following that, a 3-0 loss at Old Trafford against Manchester United. Marcus Rashford scored the opener in this game. Then we scored a calamitous own goal through Nelson Semedo. One of those like really bizarre moments where you need the 3D to see exactly what happened. And then sometimes you Still can't work out what happened. But it's amazing got credit with the own goal. And then late on, uh, sorry, yeah, midway through the second half, Harry Maguire slabbed with a bullet header, scored the Red Devils third. He's still angry at me after what I did to him in the Cardiff save all those years ago uh, in a 3 0 loss. Following that, back to back wins in the Premier League, starting with a 3 1 win away at Deepdale against Preston North End. First time I've seen Preston get to the Premier League in one of my FM saves. Beaten by three goals to one, Fabio Silva scored the first, Ruben Never scored the second, like a set piece routine from a throw in that one. One. Looks so cool. And uh, whilst Preston will grab a goal back later on, 
Francisco Trincao scored with two minutes of normal time to go his first of the year since coming back on loan in a 3-1 victory at Deepdale. And following that, a 4-1 win at home to our former FM team Norwich of last year, where Raul Jimenez scored a hat-trick as he goes for the third straight golden boot this year. Uh, scored two of his three inside the first 12 minutes. Red hot start for him and then got his third just eight minutes after the restart. So down the trail where he slid the ball into his feet. And later on in the game, we got our fourth goal, courtesy of Fabio Silva off the bench with 40 minutes to go but the guy that got the assist oh what a through ball from the mental man Morton Forsby he's only got three assists since he came in to Wolves hasn't scored a goal yet and he's got one assist per season that was his first of this year is this the season where he gets uh, multiple assists and not just one who knows but it's a four and there Lucas Morris got a late goal which is a consolation goal and our final game um, was a Carabao Cup fourth round sorry third round exit to Everton on penalties don't really care though as I said this competition means nothing to us really we were leading 3-2 on the shootout and then Pedence blazed one wide uh, which gave Everton the victory on penalties so in the Premier League as you can see after a you know mixed start three wins and two defeats in our first five games we are where you'd think we'd be right now just in the top half of the table and right now in seventh place but again because it's so early doors you can't really predict how the season's going to finish yeah, so early on into the campaign the surprise packages right now though leads off to a great start perfect 100 and burnley with four wins in five as well is reese nelson on loan there or are the clarets just on fire who knows reference for those that are watching my FIFA career mode right now uh, with uh, Arsenal of course starting off with Burnley but um, anyway yeah first of the two games today is indeed going to the Foxes at home tough start for them as we faced them here at Molyneux just a one point in their first five games and right before that trip to Amsterdam I am so so excited for that here's the game just a one injury right now uh, Morgan Gibbs White is down probably won't see him today and this will be our team 4-2-3-1 Patricia on goal but for right Nuri Bailly uh, free Chris and Tomato with Nevers and Forsby through the middle Traore and Nato the inside forwards and Buendia sports for Al Jimenez up top on the bench Bettinelli Cody Brandon Williams Ward Prowse Potential and Cal and Fabio Silva as well first of the two it's Leicester at home come on Wolves let's get ourselves a big win here it's always interesting in FM when you've got like a really great young player but then a player that's been consistently good for you that's older in your first 11 it's like when do you make the decision to drop him and then play the kid, because that's that's how I'm kind of looking right now with, oh, right on cue, that man there, Raul Jimenez, and the youngster Fabio Silva. Fabio is only 20, but as we know, he still describes the wonder kid. He's going to become a great striker at some point, because Jimenez won back-to-back -back golden boots, and he's off to a good start this season as well. It would just be so unfair to drop him, you know? So when do we make that decision to take out the Mexican and prioritise the Portuguese forward? I think most people would argue the sooner the better, right? Like the sooner you expose the young player to more first-team football at a high level, then the quicker he's going to develop and theoretically the better player he'll become in time. But for me, I just keep thinking like it wouldn't be fair on Raul Jimenez. And again, I trust the guy. Like he does miss an awful lot of chances, but you don't win back-to-back -back golden boots as a bad striker. And even right now at 31, I know he's had a couple of injuries, but he's not declining. He's still a really awesome striker in this game and 30 minutes in very fast start here as we look for the opening goal Ruben Neves to White Nuri can he cross to the middle he can't but Neves can if he wants and he'll find Traore who shoots and well right on cue there he is to turn in from close range Jimenez makes it 1-0 but it's going to be disallowed through VAR this is just how this save has gone there it is disallowed for offside and correct decision I think he was offside and oh it's tight it's tight but it is indeed the right call. But, you know, I put a meme out on Twitter the other day. For those who don't follow me, it's at DocLand. I put a meme out on Twitter. You know, this is how the save has gone. Literally every VAR decision goes against us. When are they going to start working in our favour? Can't be mad when it's the right decision, but even so, at some point, surely, we're going to start getting the luck as Emi Buendia scores his first goal in a wall shirt. Nato with the offload, Emi with the finish, 1-0 Wolves, and finally we're in front. I mentioned before, advanced playmakers slash attacking midfielders in this year's FM ordinarily, well, so far from what I've seen, haven't been the most effective. But if there's, a, if there's one man that can be effective in terms of his creativity and his goal-scoring ability, I mean, such a huge fan of this guy, both in the game and in real life as well. It is our club record signing, Emi Buendia, who gives us the opening goal. Wolves in front, Leicester looking to respond, but as I knew he wins it back, a chance to break. But instead, Traore just gives it to the opponents and Harvey Barnes fires wide. 
Leicester have a, a really decent team, so why they're struggling so much, I don't actually know. Like they've got some fantastic players that are still there, including this man on the ball, Wilfred Ndidi, but right on cue, misplaces a pass. James Madison's still there. James Justin, the fullback, normally does really well in FM as well. Um, so why they're struggling so much, I really don't know. But as NATO gets on the move down the right-hand side, he'll play it back to Semedo. And his cross is... Oh, wow. Turned in by Jimenez. And as good as this guy is, you got to say that's a goalkeeping howler. How did that go in? I think Bryce Samba is going to be quite disappointed about that one. Yeah, that should have been saved, no doubt about it. But his fourth of the year, scored the hat-trick against the Canaries to get his first free of the season, and now one here against the Foxes as well. He wants that third straight golden boot, man. He's going for it. And he's had a decent start to the season and almost got a bizarre second one today. Obviously, as I mentioned before, you know, we can stand up to the big teams. And we have had a few scouts since the save began. But for the most part, as NATO fires that cross wide, we're not quite at their level yet. So if we are to be a consistent top four team or European team, then these are the games which must be wins. They can't be slip-ups. We cannot afford that. Otherwise, we won't be able to keep up with the teams that currently, as Danny Ings should have made a 2-1, are slightly better than us. But still leading by two. I think we'll be okay, though. Should be able to close out this game. A third will definitely wrap it up. And there is Jimenez, who should have got his second goal. And that's what I mean about Jimenez as well. He's so great. Back-to-back -back golden boots. He's our top scorer. He's our best striker. But he misses so many one-on-ones. The guy could have so many more goals if he was just a little bit more composed when running through against a goalkeeper. The amount of one-on-ones he misses is just scandalous. Still, that should do it, unless there is one late chance for a third goal. Traore, oh my god, the speed of this guy is ridiculous. A damn Traore with a trademark solo run. And I've said this before, this guy just loves playing against Leicester. Every time we face the Foxes, this guy always seems to get a goal or an assist. Picks the ball up just inside his half, and honestly, man... This guy on FM is just a cheat code, I'm telling you. If he was just a bit more consistent and composed when in front of goal, that he would be, I'm not joking, probably one of the best players in the game. 3-0 though, points in the bag, good win there. It's like there's, there's no way to stop him, really. Um, because, again, his pace is just so electric. Quickest player in the game with 20 acceleration and 20 pace. And, again, the 17 strength means he barely gets pushed off the ball. Fantastic agility and balance. It doesn't lose his footing very often when twisting and turning. And, again, a knocks, knocks ball past opponent trait as well, which is really handy for a, uh, a winger with so much pace. And, again, the 18 dribbling too. Like, if, if the guy was just, like, slightly better with the finishing and... <laughs> The technique, I suppose, as well. He literally would be unstoppable. It's crazy. My favourite types of goals in FM are the team goals. Like, so many passes, lovely off the ball movement. You know, those to me are just glorious to watch, especially on 2D as well. Um, but when Traore goes on the run, it's just excitement. You know, you just sort of lean forward in your chair. Can he do it again? Well, he did in that one. And uh, here we go. So, second and final game. Man, I'm buzzing for this. Ajax, Champions League, group opener away in Amsterdam. And already, I would say, this is a big game here. Um, I guess a side that will be battling with for qualification from our group alongside Dortmund and Celtic as well. So, hence the game. Uh, Connor Cody picks up a knock on training, a knock, a knock in training. Hence why he's out for this one. And this will be our lineup. Two changes on the back of the win there against Leicester. Uh, sorry, one change even. And this is it. Patricia's in goal. Back for his like Nuri, Bai, uh, I, uh, Chris. Big Chris and Samedo as well. Never was a force through the middle. Trail on the left. Trin Cow comes in on the right. And Buendia once again sports Raul Jimenez. On the bench, Bettinelli, Bolly, Williams, Warprouse, but it's Nato and Silver as well. Similar performance, similar result, and a win on match day one. And I'll be absolutely buzzing. Come on, Wolves. Ajax, Wolves, Dortmund, Celtic. Again, this could have been a much tougher group for us here. No doubt about it. I'm so glad we avoided the, uh, the PSG RB Leipzig group. But it won't be easy. No doubt about it. Again, both teams very good indeed. However, again, it could have been a lot tougher. And if we can win on match day one, again, in a really big game here in Amsterdam, that will be a huge statement. And that is my point on Raul Jimenez right there. How many one-on-ones does this guy miss? I don't know whether it's just an FM thing because I've had multiple strikers like this where they're just so 
good. Like they're they're so clinical for the most part, but then you think about all the great chances and the easier chances they miss, and it's just so frustrating. Like one on ones, you think a striker of uh, you know him and his ability, he should be burying like four out of five, but instead he probably only converts like two out of five. It's so frustrating that he misses more than he scores. Anyway, still nil nil. We've imposed ourselves on the game thus far. Keep it up. And I think we can find ourselves a breakthrough here in the Netherlands. Francisco in the team, on the run. And Jimenez off the post. Right on cue. Good start, though. So I'm going to shout to the boys and encourage them from the sidelines. They're fired up by the feedback. And directly afterwards, we're going to go a goal up. Oh, oh, I love him. Jimenez with the assist. Trail with the goal. 1-0 Wolves. Can I take credit for that? I don't think so. I love when you make like the most minor change ever and you sit there and think, was that me? Oh, Rao. Rao slagging him off and then the back heel assist first time out of the Sky Strayer. Fair play. That was pretty sick. Not going to lie, that was pretty goddamn cool, wasn't it? As Ajax looked for a response directly afterwards in the first half an hour, we have been in control. But this is a good Ajax team as Nandez fires wide and it's still 1-0. And if we can close out the first half leading to break, I'll be buzzing. Dortmund are tuning it up on Celtic right now. I do think out of all the teams in the group, they probably are the strongest. They've still got a lot of their world-class players, including Holland, who, as we know, turns into a monster. Um, well, in, in FM, in FIFA, and, you know, I think everyone knows he will in real life as well. But uh, even so, still leading by a goal here. And again, this will be a big, big victory on the first day, in the first night, if you will. If we can hold on to it. When Diaz slides through Rao this time, again, again, it's just, he misses. Again, I would say... Three or four out of five one-on-ones. And that is pretty poor for a striker of his ability. I don't know why he misses so many easy chances. He could have had a hat-trick already tonight, and instead he's got zero. And that's what frustrates me so much, because I know he could be so much better. And it's not a lack of composure or concentration when going through one-on-one. -on -one. So I don't know what it is. You know, oftentimes you'll find if a striker does miss a lot of easy chances, it's due to, again, a lack of composure, the lack of the mental side. You know, but Jimenez has got great mental stats, so I don't quite know why it is. At this point, I'm just resigned to thinking it's a character flaw with Raul. Scores a lot of goals, but misses a lot of easy chances. 22 minutes after the restart, as we look for a second and right on cue, he's just headed the ball into the top corner and said, Gaffer, shut your mouth, mate. You don't know what you're talking about. Tough love. <laughs> Emmy with the assist, back stick, Raul Jimenez, bullet header, top corner, two nils. But again, that's a that's a difficult goal to score. Three red and white shirts next to him trying to outjump him. That's, that's probably the hardest chance he's had all night. And ironically, it's the one he scores from. Corner, Ajax. And in a game where we've been in complete control... I'll be very disappointed if we throw away the clean sheet later on and give the hosts a chance to get back into it in the dying stages. What a tackle, Raul Jimenez. No, maybe not. Oh, my. Who is this guy? I mean, he's got to be the weirdest striker ever using FM. He's bloody brilliant, but then sometimes he's just mad. Well, that's put us in a very precarious position for no reason whatsoever. Uh, well, let's go 4-4-1 four, four, now, as you often do when you have this problem. And we'll bring on Fabio Silva for Emi Buendia. And we'll operate him now as a pressing four, since he won't get much support um, being on his own out there. But even so, still leading by two. I think we should be okay, but even so, that's put us in a little bit of a dangerous position. Ajax have not caused us a problem all game long. So if they get back in this late on and cause us some problems in the final few minutes, I'm going to be fuming. I know Raul scored our second, but either way, it was... The host get through, and the shot is, oh, you know, even when that ball's in midair, I just thought, I can see that somehow trickling in. Really, bro, what was that? I mean, I can't blame that on Raul Jimenez, but still Raul, I'm just kidding. Uh, the shot from range, I mean, it's, it's accurate, but it's slow. That should have been a very easy save, Patricio down low to his right, instead fumbles it, and if Ajax come back from 2-0 down to claim a point, this is just a throwaway. Surely not. I mean, come on. We've been in complete control, but now the hosts have got some confidence. Cross to the middle. Grav and Birch heads just wide. Don't throw this away. Drop Pedence and Trincao down. That means the Silver have no support whatsoever, but to be honest. As I'm going to much lower the tempo as well. Oh, by the way, we're starting games off at a higher tempo than before. Um, forgot to um to show you that pre-game, but uh, even so. Still leading by a goal. We're about to end stoppage time. I think we should be okay. And we do indeed hold on with the 10 men. So Jimenez put us in a bit of a precarious position after he scored our second goal. But despite his red card, we hold on to the three points on match day one. Absolutely buzzing. That's the way to start the group off. It's going to be tough to get out of. 
But right now, well, one game into six, we're in a qualification spot. And I'll be Jimenez out for the uh, game against, uh, who have we got next? Is it Dortmund or is it Celtic? It's Dortmund at home, massive one, and Raul is going to miss that as well. Frustrating indeed, but hey, we got the win. That's the most important thing. So, welcome to this episode of the FM Reboot, guys. Big thank you for which you enjoyed it. And if you did, please drop a like. So, you'll have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of the Reboot. Oh, I'm thinking, do we play match day three against Celtic and maybe the informed Cherries away, or possibly Aston Villa in Celtic, or maybe away in Glasgow? Plus the Blades at Bramwell Lane or Leeds off to a good start home as well. I think we'll do one of the two Celtic games, whether it's match day three or match day four. I'm not entirely sure. Have a great day, though, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of the FM Reboot very soon.